Today I'm going to be sharing a look inside our nature study program that we've been using from Beautiful Feet Books. It is called Seasons, a Field, and it is a literature approach to nature study for primary grades. So hi and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Haley and I'm a homeschooling mom to two little boys ages eight and five years old. As I mentioned in the introduction, we've been using this nature study from Beautiful Feet Books for the last couple of months and we have really been enjoying it. Whenever I set out to find a science curriculum for this last school year for my boys. I knew that I wanted to do something that would allow us to just get outside and explore together. With my oldest turning eight years old, I know that I'm probably getting closer to the end of the time where he wants to just go hang out outside with mom and explore. So um, we settled on this one. And the way that this program is laid out, it covers the seasons of autumn, winter, and spring. It doesn't have anything for the summertime months, which is fine by me because as you can probably tell, I'm from the south and it is very hot down here here in the summertime months. So we don't do a whole lot outside anyways unless we're going swimming or something like that. So before we hop into looking inside of the curriculum so that you can see how the lessons actually lay out on a weekly basis. Um, I'm going to share some of the books that we have been utilizing alongside this curriculum. So like I said, it is a literature based approach to nature study. So you're going to have to buy several different books to go along with this study guide. There are three primary books that are kind of like the spine of the program that you're going to revisit multiple times as you work throughout it. Um, one of those books is this Slow Down, 50 Mindful Moments in Nature. And it is so cute. It just has the cutest illustrations and like little stories that go along with different um, subjects. So, for example, one week we learned about preserving blueberries and there was a lesson in here about a fox and how foxes eat blueberries and things like that. Um, yeah, a fox eats berries from a bush. And then this past week, we actually finished up the lesson on um, decomposing, which had to do with mushrooms. And so we read this page here. Mushrooms grow in a forest. And it just has, as you can see, hopefully, really cute illustrations and it's just those two pages there that you read from and then your kids can kind of discuss some of the things found there. So this watercolor with me in the forest book, it's another one that you're going to use either once a week or every other week, depending on how many days a week you do it. And it just walks you through different watercolor techniques. Um, it might be a little advanced for my kids, but it's been fun to see them try. So like this past week, we learned about the the wet on wet technique for water coloring whenever we are working on our mushrooms. And it just has like the little illustrations there to show you how to. Whenever you come to the watercolor lessons, the guide will prompt you on what to um, draw and then paint a picture of. Or if you're like me, you can purchase these little um, printed out cards that go along with each lesson. And then your kids can just paint directly on that card. So let me see. We have these little nature. It's just a little sketch pad that I purchased for my kids to use as their nature journal. So for example, this is like the week that we did um, blackberries. So when we learned about blackberries, this was the card on the card stock that came. And my son just practiced his... Uh, his little watercolor techniques, painting the blackberry, and then I'll always let them glue it into their nature journal and they can decorate it however they want to, so with different washi tape and stuff like that. This is just a little sketch pad that I picked up at Walmart for like three bucks and they'll put their, their journaling in here whenever we go through a lesson. Um, it'll prompt you in the guide to add something to your nature journal. And this is what we're utilizing for that. And while I'm telling y'all about the little cards that you can utilize, it also comes with these field guides. So you can order the kit that has the field guides and it will prompt you in there on when to use these with your 
um, lesson. So it's just got some cute little illustrations that you can use that go along with your lesson. Hopefully these are showing up on the screen. If not, you can get some good images of it over on uh, Beautiful Feet Books website. So I'll link to that down below. The third book that you revisit in this curriculum a few times is called The Complete Brambly Hedge. Now this book was on back order and I couldn't actually find it even um, from Thrift Books, which is where I like to buy a lot of my used books from. So we have been utilizing an online digital version of it from archive.org, which is just an online database. You can log in there and you can check out the book for an hour at a time that accounts free so you just create your account you log in and then you can check out a ton of different books on there so on the days that i know we're going to need that book i just log into my account right before we're ready to use it i borrow it for an hour i pull it up on my laptop screen and then it even has the pictures on there so my kids just sit around me we read it from the laptop and it has been working fine now some of the other books that we have just loved so far in this series are and there's more that you're going to need to purchase than what I show you here but just to give you an idea uh, this is called home in the woods this has been our absolute favorite book that we have read so far it went along with the preservation week whenever we learned about um, preserving and we made some homemade blueberry jam and this was just a, a cute story about a family whose father passes away and they have to move to a home in the woods and they just have to learn how to work together to make ends meet and it's based on a true story it was just i love picture books like this that have a really good storyline the artwork is cute my kids enjoyed it we sat outside one day and read this and um done our nature journaling and it was just it was a fun day the other books this was tales of the mushroom folk and this one was fun we just finished this um lesson up last week and my boys like just learning about the different types of mushrooms they really like getting outside and just finding different things growing around so it kind of personifies the different mushroom people and then you can kind of go outside and identify different mushrooms that you may find growing around your house or in the woods and this wasn't in as part of the curriculum but we had some clay on hand and we actually made some little clay mushrooms out of it so we shaped them and made them and we're going to be painting those so the boys enjoyed doing that it was just a fun little craft to add in a couple other books just real quick that we've also enjoyed alongside this curriculum is the golden glow and then fall walk is one that we haven't read together yet but i've read it and i think my boys are gonna love it they love all things um about leaves and trees and just really learning about what all is growing around them so they're going to enjoy that one all right, now that we've taken a quick look at some of the books that you utilize alongside this program, I'm gonna flip the camera around, let you guys have a look at um, one of the weeks that's in here and just kind of explain how it lays out so you can see how a typical um, unit within the curriculum would flow. Okay, so here is a quick look at the table of contents. So like I mentioned, it is broken down by season so you have like your two autumn sections two for winter and then two for spring so each one of these um like the forage section preserve decompose and special lessons each one of these the first three there besides the special lessons so the first three have four days of work that you can do the special lessons includes things like art appreciation, um, a recipe, maybe a handicraft, things like that. So we're going to flip over to the grow section, which is uh, in the springtime, and take a look at exactly how those four lessons lay out. So this is what it looks like whenever you start a new section within that season. So this is the lessons on grow, and it's going to tell you um, the library connections are additional books that you can grab if you want to. Here's the materials that you're going to need for all four of these lessons. And then down here, it's just a little quote from the book that you're going to be reading. 
So over here, this is where your lessons actually start. So every week, lesson one, or every two weeks if you're just doing it twice a week, but lesson one is going to start with reading one of the books that you have to get in order to do this. So this particular week, you're going to be reading from Miss Maple Seeds. And then it has some information for you to discuss, um, just some questions to ask or things to point out to your children. Lesson two of every section is going to be your field work day. So this is where you can actually use the field note from the field note guide that you can pick up that I showed you. It has like the, the that's the thing. That's the package that comes with the um, watercolor cards and then your field note guide. So this particular lesson does have a field note that goes along with it and it tells you the different materials you're going to need. So this part is usually like some type of an experiment or project to do. Like I mentioned earlier, we um, made blueberry jam as part of the preserve unit. And then for the decompose unit, we collected mushroom spores so that just gives you a couple ideas of some of the things that you may do here and it looks like right here you are going to be looking at a seed day three is going to be your notebooking day you're going to get out your watercolor book and you're going to have a watercolor lesson there and if you have the package then you are going to have a um a watercolor card to go along with this and then the, the fourth lesson of every week is your slow down and wonder day. So you are going to grab your slow down book. You're going to read the pages here that it tells you to read from. It gives you some things to look out for. It gives you something that you can um, do to kind of play and just, just some general ideas for how to spend that time. But that's basically like your nature walk day. So that's a day for you and your kids just to hang out together and have some fun and discuss some of the things that you have learned that week um, during the previous lessons. So every little unit within the, the season follows that same general layout. So you're going to have gr your first lesson is going to be the story. The second lesson is going to be your field work. The third lesson is going to be your notebooking day. And then the fourth lesson is going to be your nature walk day. So after that's done, you can see you would flip to the next section and it's going to start all over again. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful. We have really enjoyed doing this unit study so far. We intend to carry it through the winter and the springtime months. Even during our Christmas break, we're still gonna go on and do the um, winter section of it because my boys just enjoy it and it's a fun way it doesn't feel like school to them. You know, it's just a fun way to hang out with mom, do some art, and we're learning along the way, which is the best way to learn. So I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video.